In order to solve this question, we need to know how total internal reflection works when we're using Snell's law. So here's Snell's law right here. We have the first index of refraction times sine of theta one is equal to N two times sine of theta two. Now I've boxed in these angles because I want to make it a little bit clear in case we've forgotten what these angles are. Now the second angle, that is the angle where the light ray gets bent as it passes into the second medium. And we call this the refracted angle. Now the first angle, theta one, we call that the angle of incidence. So we have the light ray hitting a surface and based on the angle between the surface normal and that incident ray, that is our angle of incidence. Now for total internal reflection, we just change it ever so slightly. We call theta one the critical angle. The critical angle is simply the minimum angle of incidence that'll cause the refracted angle to be 90 degrees. So it'll look a little something like this. So we have N1 times sine of theta sub C, so that's the critical angle, is equal to N2 times sine of 90. It has to be 90 degrees so that it totally internally reflects. Now the sine of 90 is simply one. So we can go ahead, rearrange the equation to solve for the critical angle, and we get that the critical angle is simply the inverse sine of the second index of refraction divided by the first index of refraction. Now, going ahead and solving part one, we're given that the first index of refraction is 1.53, and for error, it's simply one. We'll use one just to make the calculations easy. And once again, remember that the refracted angle will be 90 degrees. So when we solve for the critical angle, we'll have the inverse sine of one divided by 1.53, and we'll get a critical angle of 48. 0.8 degrees. So 40.8 degrees is the minimum angle for this to internally reflect. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing for part B and we'll get a critical angle of 60.6 degrees.